Trio challenges a game mode in Mount Minigames that has the players play a series of 5 1v3 minigames to earn an overall ranking depending on how they complete the games. This could be tasks around speed, survival, distance, and other requirements. If the players lose even one minigame, they have to start over from the very beginning. With top-notch play in all five minigames, players can earn the coveted Peak Performer achievement. This is done by getting all A ranks in all five minigames in the stage, giving you an S rank overall. What makes this so difficult to complete? Well, some of the requirements need near-perfect play, lucky breaks with some minigames, and sometimes relying on teammates to hold their own as well. Today I want to show some tips and tricks to help get these A ranks. I'll go over strategies for both playing as a team and solo player, so let's start off with the team stages. The team stages are on stages 1, 2, and 3. This can be done with either other players locally, online, or with CPUs. Having other players allows you to work together and support each other, making the minigames much easier than working with the CPUs, so if you have some friends willing to assist you, this can be a big help. Some things to keep in mind is there can be lag when doing this challenge online. If you are going for the achievement, only the hosts of the online lobby will earn it. And stages will have harder solo CPUs the higher their number, with stage 1 being the easiest and stage 3 being the hardest. In stage 1 we have Boulder Ball, Hide and Sneak, Spotlight Swim, Pogo A Go Go, and Archer Ival. Most opponents you face will be on easy difficulty, except for the final minigame having the CPU on normal difficulty. Boulder Ball is pretty simple to start out with since you only need a max of 15 seconds to get to the top of the hill. The CPU will try to target the closest player to the top, so be wary and ready to dodge. As long as you keep pushing forwards, this should be a quick A rank. Hide and Sneak is definitely going to be one of your big reset points at this stage since the whole team needs to make it through all the rounds. With CPU partners, there's no real way to coordinate with them so you have to hope to get lucky with this A rank. However, if you have other players with you, it can be much easier for all three players to hide in one spot for all three rounds. Spotlight Swim gives you 10 seconds to win the minigame. If all three of you move your lights together on the same spot, this should be an easy win. Pogo A Go Go is another possible reset point, especially with CPU teammates. All three teammates must win the 30 second minigame, but your teammates have a tendency to fall. Best thing is to keep distance from each other to prevent bumping a teammate off the stage. Archer Ival gives each teammate a point for each second they survive in the minigame, with a max of 30 points for each player. Luckily, there's a 9 point leeway to work with here, so an A rank can be achieved with even not the whole team. In Stage 2, we have Tackle Takedown, Look Away, Piranha's Pursuit, Tube It or Lose It, and Coconut Conk. The first two opponents are at easy difficulty, the next two are at normal difficulty, and the final one is at hard difficulty. Tackle Takedown has a very lenient 10 seconds to win the minigame. The big thing to remember is that the player must make the tackle, not the CPUs, in order to receive the A rank. Look Away is one of the big reset points of this stage. You need to make it through all 5 rounds with your CPU teammates. Unfortunately, you cannot coordinate with your CPU teammates, meaning that you have to rely on luck for this A rank. With other players, it's pretty easy to react to the opponent's directions to make it through each round. Also, if needed, you can use pauses right before your movements to react to the opponent for some extra safety. Piranha's Pursuit requires you to win the minigame in 38 seconds or less for the A rank. However, you do need a little bit of luck here with the opponent slowing down enough on the skateboard for PD Piranha to get to them. Best thing here is to go for low ground pounds to get the most rain on PD to help him speed up. Tube it or lose it is the next big reset point in the stage. Once again, all three teammates must make it to the end of the minigame to get the A rank. Also, you have to depend on your CPU teammates to avoid the opponent, which can be kind of a lucky break. Best thing here is to spread out from your teammates to try to get the opponent to follow you, giving you some control of the minigame. Also, try to go off the ramps after the solo player to react to their movements. If they move slowly off the ramp, go fast off the ramp, and vice versa. In the final stretch, react to your opponent's movements and move as far forward as possible to cross the finish line to end the minigame faster. Coconut Conk requires you to win the minigame in 10 seconds or less for the A rank. The big things to keep in mind here are the time limit and watching for your teammates since you can stun them with a ground pound. Also just like Tackle Takedown, you must be the one to win the minigame for the A rank, not your CPU teammates. In stage 3 we have Squared Away, Title Toss, Tug of War, Skewer Scurry, and Goal. The first two opponents are at normal difficulty, the next two are at hard difficulty, and the final one is at master difficulty. 
Squared Away requires you to win the minigame in 10 seconds or less to get the A rank. Just like the other minigames from Stage 2, the player is required to win, not the CPU teammates. Best thing here is to watch for your teammates positioning to corner the opponent. Title Toss needs all 3 teammates to make it through the minigame to get the A rank. This could be the first reset point for this stage. A big thing to know for this minigame is the water is constantly pushing you out to the edge, so keep moving towards the opponent. Also, your invincibility frames do not last quite as long, so be ready to avoid the waves. Tug of War requires you to win the minigame in 8 seconds or less for the A rank. Best thing is to start rotating before the start of the minigame to get a good start. Skewer Scurry needs all 3 teammates to make it through the minigame to get the A rank. This minigame can be tricky, especially with CPU teammates. Luckily, this minigame is only 20 seconds long, and if needed, you can use pauses to give yourself extra time to dodge. Goal requires you and your teammates to win the minigame with 18 to 30 seconds left for the A rank. This pretty much only gives you a few opportunities to miss shots as a team. It also doesn't help that the opponent is set to master difficulty. Best thing here is to try to make your shots together and spread out on the goal. This will most likely be the hardest minigame in the stage. The solo stages for Trio Challenge are on stages 4, 5, and 6. You are on your own this time, but now you have the most control over your run. Also, like the team stages, the solo stages have the same minigame order and difficulties, with stage 4 being the easiest and stage 6 being the hardest. Boulder Ball requires you to keep the team 150 to 300% distance away total to receive the A rank. This means the team needs to be at most half distance average when the minigame ends. The best thing here is to launch a boulder down the middle first and only making slight turns left or right to get the CPUs on the side. Hide and Sneak is going to be your main reset point of this stage. Here you need to find all the opponents by round 2 to receive the A rank. The big problem? This game is random and you need some luck finding 2 or more opponents hiding in the same spot in a round. However, I did notice by the time the curtain closed, wherever the CPUs are near is sometimes where they are hiding. Just look for their placements by curtain close and hope for the best. Spotlight Swim requires you to keep your head above water for more than 20 seconds to receive the A rank. Best thing is to swim in patterns to confuse and scatter the CPU lights. Once all three lights gather and chase you, use a dive to escape once they start to get close to you. For added safety, you can use a dive in the last couple of seconds to guarantee the win, but only if you have the time to spare. Pogo A Gogo requires you to win the minigame within 15 seconds to receive the A rank. Best thing is to focus each opponent one by one to try to get them to fall into the floor. Archer Ivor requires you to hit all the targets with more than 11 seconds remaining to receive the A rank. The main problem here is you only get a few chances to miss, so every arrow is important. Best thing is to try to hit each target in a line to prevent long movements left and right. Tackle Takedown requires you to score a touchdown within 15 seconds to receive the A rank. Best thing is to run up either of the sides and use all your boost towards the end zone. Look Away requires you to win the minigame within 2 rounds to receive the A rank. This will be one of your main reset points of this stage. You are going to need at least 2 opponents looking in the same direction in the same round. Best thing here is to pause right before choosing your direction and input the direction most opponents are looking in. Piranha's Pursuit requires you to win the minigame with no mistakes to receive the A rank. This means no bumping into or hitting the top of rocks or logs on the path. Luckily there's no time limit here so you can take your time with this minigame. Also, remember to grab the vines to help swing over obstacles. Tubiter Loser requires you to win the minigame before passing the first stump to receive the A rank. This is another main reset point of this stage. The best thing is to accelerate towards the opponents, then use the brakes right before the jump to land earlier. Once you land, accelerate towards the opponents right away and be ready to brake immediately. Going off the ramp at full speed can work with landing on an opponent, but be ready to brake immediately too. Coconut Conk requires you to win the minigame to receive the A rank. The best thing is to avoid being stuck on either side to have more escape options. Squared Away requires you to win the minigame to receive the A rank. The best thing is to not get stuck in a corner and be ready to weave between the large squares. Tidal Toss requires you to win the minigame with 21 to 30 seconds remaining to receive the A rank. Best thing is to do full ground pounds to send out the largest waves since those have the most knockback. Tug of War requires you to win the minigame within 8 seconds to receive the A rank. Best thing is to start rotating before the start of the minigame. Skewer Scurry requires you to win the minigame within 8 seconds to receive the A rank. This is one of your main reset points of this stage. 
Best thing is to try to confuse the opponents by switching between two directions until they are positioned incorrectly to avoid. Goal requires you to win the minigame with only letting a max of two goals pass to receive the A rank. This is another main reset point of this stage. Best thing is to be mindful of where the opponents are facing to know where to defend, and if needed, use pauses to see where the balls are going to perfect your defense. Some of these stages can be easier or harder than others to get the S rank, but they are all possible. Honestly, it's up to the player for which stage matches their playstyle. I still recommend giving each stage a try to learn the challenge. Which stage did you get the S rank in? Let me know! If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Thanks y'all, and I'll catch you later!